untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a black-white deck titled Drama Den, as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. It's a token slash sacrifice deck built around a dramatic finale, the 4-mana rare enchantment from Strixhaven, saying creature tokens you control get plus 1 plus 1, and whenever one or more non-token creatures you control die, create a 2-1 white and black inkling creature token with flying, and this ability triggers only once each turn. And of course those inklings will also get the plus 1 plus 1 bonus, essentially making them 3-2 inkling tokens. So Dramatic Finale wants us to include some other ways to generate tokens, so we don't only rely on the inkling tokens, and we ideally also have a few ways to sacrifice our own creatures, so we don't only have to rely on the opponent killing our creatures to generate those inklings in the first place. And we try to do both here. Another key card in the deck is Lures of the Dream Den, not playing it as companion since of course we want to include our Dramatic Finale in our deck as well, but still get access to the 3 mana 3-2 three, legendary Cat Nightmare with a lifelink that during each of our turns we may cast one permanent spell with mana value 2 or less from our graveyard, so it can get back removal spells like Myers Grasp, giving creatures minus 3 minus 3, and can also get back our cheap creatures, and especially Selfless Savior is great in combination with Lurus, the 1 mana 1-1 one, one that we can sacrifice to give another creature we control indestructible until end of turn, so this can help protect our Lurus to keep it in play, and if we have our Dramatic Finale every time we sacrifice Selfless Savior, no matter whose turn it is, we'll generate that Inkling token so those are all very synergistic with each other. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck at one mana. Besides our four copies of Selfless Savory, we also have three copies of a Garrison Cat as a 1-1 that when it dies creates a 1-1 white human soldier creature token, so it generates even more tokens to go with our finale and provides ample sacrifice fodder for some of our other sacrifice effects. And then we also have three copies of Eye Twitch, the 1-1 flyer, that when it dies lets us learn, and we've got access to seven lessons in the sideboard, including Academic Probation, Environmental Sciences to hit our land drops, both Reduced to Memory and Necrotic Fumes as removal, Introduction to Prophecy if we just need some card draw, Inkling Summoning to make a 2-1 Inkling, and then Mascot Exhibition if we have access to a lot of mana to make three tokens at once. Then taking a look at our 2-drops, we've got the full play set of Clarion Spirit, a 2-2 spirit that whenever we cast our second spell each turn generates a 1-1 spirit creature token with flying, it's also great with the plus 1 plus 1 bonus from Dramatic Finale, and we can easily cast 2 spells in the same turn, especially once we get Lurus in play to replay cards out of the graveyard. Then we also have the full play set of Shale, a Dean of Radiance, the 2 mana 1-1 one, one legendary bird cleric with flying and vigilance, and we can tap Shale and put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on each creature that entered the battlefield this turn under our control. So that is great in combination with our Clarion Spirit especially, since we can put plus 1 counters on all creatures that entered, including the Spirit token. Also great if we curve a turn 2 Shale into a turn 3 Woe Strider, as we'll be able to put a plus 1 counter on both the Strider and the Goat token. And then we can also potentially play Ambrose, Dean of Shadow for 4 mana, a 4-4 legendary human warlock that can tap to put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on another target creature, and then Ambrose deals 2 damage to that creature, and whenever a creature we control with a plus 1 counter on a die, we get to draw a card. So both halves are also very synergistic with each other if we manage to draw multiple copies. And then we've got our three copies of Mars Grasp as a cheap removal spell that we can recur out of the graveyard with Lurus. And then at 3 mana, the full play set of Woe Strider, a 3-2 that when it enters a battlefield creates an 0-1 white goat creature token, and we can sacrifice another creature at any point to scry one. So that gives us access to a sacrifice outlet that can sacrifice creatures both in our turn and the opponent's turn to potentially enable our dramatic finale, especially great with creatures like a Garrison Cat and Eye Twitch. And if we have a Lurus in play, we can replay those creatures out of the graveyard over and over again to give us an incremental advantage. And then topping off our curve, besides our four copies of Dramatic Finale, which do also stack nicely, if we draw multiple copies we can generate multiple inklings, and they'll get multiple plus one plus one bonuses. And then we also have three copies of Doom Foretold, which gives us access to a permanent removal spell that can get rid of some bigger threats that the Mars Grasp cannot deal with, and we can easily fuel the Doom Foretold by replaying more Sacrifice Fodder out of the graveyard with Garrison Cat and Eye Twitch, especially if we have a Lurus in play. 
and then eventually we can also generate a 2 2 knight token that will also synergize with our dramatic finale. And then the mana base includes three copies of Castle Ardenvale as a great mana sink, especially in combination with our dramatic finale, and then seven planes and six swamps in combination with our snarl, and four of the black white pathway. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. We've got Mars Grasp as cheap interaction, Clarion Spirit to hopefully generate some tokens. Don't have a Lurus yet, which is kind of the missing piece here. Opponent with a Fabled Passage. Fetches an island. Did find a Voice Strider, which will fill out our curve nicely. And a Watcher of the Spheres with a missing picture. Probably worth killing with our Mars Grasp here. And then probably play a Voice Rider next turn into a Doom Foretold, or we could Dramatic Finale first. Next turn we can also double spell Clarion Spirit with Miner's Grasp, make a Spirit token. As we see, Cloud can see draw a card. So generating some Inklings here to compete with the opponent's Flyers will be very important as well. Keep Swamp in hand for future Snarls, play a Pathway. And then, yeah, kind of like getting the dramatic finale in play. Even lets our goats attack. And I'm happy if Strider trades for Seer since we'll generate an Inkling token. And then next turn we can maybe Spirit plus Mars Grasp. Staggering Insights, alright. So Mars Grasp looking even juicier if the opponent can protect uh, Cloudkin. And the Sea Dasher Octopus, our opponent's going all in here, hoping we don't have interaction. Voice Strider cannot sacrifice to itself, otherwise we could generate a 3-2 Inkling at instant speed here. And Dramatic Finale doesn't trigger off other tokens dying. But I think we'll be just fine. Hit for four. And then Doom Foretold should be the final nail in the coffin here. And if we ever draw Lurus, getting access to Mars Grasp again is going to make it impossible for the opponent to establish a board. So we get to untap. Another dramatic finale. Yeah, don't mind if I do. Might get countered by a Lofty Denial, there we go. We'll attack with everyone. If they want to trade for Clarion Spirit, that's fine by me. Another Staggering Insights, okay. So now we can sacrifice Clarion Spirit to generate an Inkling at instant speed. Which seems worth it. And an Eye Twitch is fine. Another Watcher of the Spheres. Alright, so let me start by... Let's see, we could play Eye Twitch, sack it to the Voice Strider to get another card out of the sideboard. Is that better than just playing Eye Twitch and Doom Foretold? And then I can trade Voice Strider for Watcher. That seems fine. I guess her opponent could technically have a Fairy Vandal, which they can flash in here thanks to the discount to then grow the Watcher and ambush our Spirit Token, but let's see if that's the case. It is not. And then, yeah, we'll play Iron Twitch and Doom Foretold. And then we can sacrifice Iron Twitch to the Doom Foretold, generate another Inkling. 
And we can get maybe an inkling summoning. Or we're pretty close to casting our mascot exhibition too here. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. Missing black mana. But we can curve shale into Lurus in the meantime. I'll try it. And then a single swamp plus us play Eye Twitch and Strider, and then we've got kind of our sacrifice engine online to get value with lures. So Clarion Spirit's gonna be great if we can play it in the same turn as Eye Twitch. Put it on a red black. And it looks like a sacrifice deck gonna steal my shale and sack it to a village rights. As long as we can keep Lurus alive, that's the most important. Although the Sacrifice deck is pretty good at dealing with creature decks like ours. So for now, maybe wait on Lurus and go Clarion Spirit Eye Twitch. And then once we get Voice Rider in play, we can counteract those steel effects by just sacking our own creature in response. Alright, so this turn I think still Woe Strider, and then next turn I can get immediate value with Lurus. So we'll attack. And then we could always sacrifice Eye Twitch to get a Lusson, which can also deal with Bastion. Put on probably playing with Extus. And the back half, which can generate a big avatar token. It's going to be a tapped Savai Trium. And claim the firstborn, trying to steal Clarion Spirit. So I could sacrifice it in response. Although this could be bait, and our opponent doesn't have their own village rights number two. Yeah, it's an interesting decision. Either way, I could replay Clarion Spirit with Lurus next turn, so it's not too much of a loss if we have to do that, so... Yeah, let's sacrifice our own Clarion Spirit here. And then another one on top seems fine to keep. So, I could get Valley with Lurus, or I could get Valley with Clarion Spirit as a decision now. I don't think the Spirit token matters too much, so let's get Valley with Lurus instead. And then, can either go with Clarion Spirit or Shale. Shale might be better, because then next turn I can go double spirit if Lurus is still in play and add a ton of counters to my board. And then our flyers can attack. Alright, let's hope Lurus stays around. It's gonna be a Sedgemore Witch, that's fine. We're gonna quickly take over in the air with our spirit tokens, so... If the ground gets a bit stalled, we don't really mind. A village rights, so they did have the village rights after all. Glad we sacked the Clarion Spirit in response then. Opponent draws two. And an eye twitch. Alright, so that can find an answer for Lurus. But not before we get a pretty sweet turn here. Play Clarion Spirits. Play another Clarion Spirits. And then... Probably just attack with our Spirit Token and Eye Twitch. Those trade. And then Shale adds a ton of counters to our board. Could have also taken a different approach where we sacrifice our Eye Twitch to exile the opponent's Eye Twitch so they can't possibly sacrifice it and get an answer, but again, if our opponent spends their turn casting a Necrotic Fumes on Lurus, I think we're fine with that. And we're getting close to casting Mascot Exhibition if we draw one more land. It's gonna be Bastion. Fumes exile so it doesn't trigger Bastion at least. It's just going to be double Bastion. Fair enough. So, we'll untap first. 
Snarl comes into play tapped. So we're attacking with probably just our flyers. Don't really want Bastion to trigger a whole bunch. Although we have to be careful if their last card is the back half of Axtus, they could just kill us with triple Bastion in play. So that's kind of scary. So we might have to find an answer by sacking the Eye Twitch here. So let's attack with our flyers first. And take it from there. And then probably need to learn Reduce to Mastery, or we could Probation and name the card in question so they can't cast it, assuming we can kill the opponent next turn. But that's definitely not a guarantee. So maybe getting rid of uh, Bastion's better. Yeah, I think Reduce to Memory is the way to go. And Dramatic Finale on top seems fine. And then we can replay Eye Twitch. I guess I can sack it again to learn and I guess do both. I guess that's the safest play. Exile a Bastion. Trigger Clarion Spirits. And then sack Eye Twitch again. Get Probation. Still keep Finale on top. Activate Shale. Add a ton of counters. And then we want to cast this now. So we either name Awaken the Blood Avatar or we name Plum the Forbidden. I think Awaken the Blood Avatar is probably the pick. Just because Plum they probably would have cast at a different point already. So we'll see how that plays out. Plum the Forbidden with Sagemore Witch and Double Bastion still gonna hurt. Right, it's just going to be Necrotic Fumes on Lurus. Can sack it in response, just so it's in the graveyard, not that it matters too much in this matchup. But I'm still happy keeping Finale on top. So we might have just delayed the inevitable here, since our opponent can still awaken the Blood Avatar next turn, but not before we... Smack them for a bunch in the air, so we've got 10 in the air, so we're one short of lethal. I could sacrifice, let's say, a Clarion Spirit to my Voice Rider to make an Inkling, and then can pump it with Shale as well, doesn't seem necessary. And we can still do that in the opponent's turn. So let's see if they hadn't awakened the Blood Avatar in hand all along. And yeah, there it is. Awaken the Blood Avatar. And that's a lot of triggers. Alright, we're at 9, so we're not dead yet. And we get to sack probably the Clarion Spirits. Make an Inkling. So we should still have lethal in the air on the way back here. That's gonna deal a bit more damage to us. Can chump. Maybe not a bad idea since we have lethal in the air regardless. So we'll block and then scry. Don't need Swamp. And sadly, they have an Immerstorm Predator, which can sacrifice the remaining creatures to drain us to death with Bastion. GG's, on to the next one.
All right, we're on the draw with a nice opening hand. I twitch into Spirit into Lurus. Facing a snow-covered mountain. Make that two. Although no place, so it might be more controlling red deck. So can expect Clarion Spirit to die as soon as we play it. That's okay. Makes it more likely that Lurus survives. And then I'm probably going to play a Woe Strider before Lurus and wait until we can get immediate value. Hit for one, play Strider, and then double finale is going to be pretty awesome. Thrill of Possibility discarding Mountain. So our opponent could be a Transmogrify combo deck, perhaps. Although we haven't seen any tokens yet. It's going to be Cathartic Reunion discarding Teach by Example and another Reunion. Alright, well, uh, play Finale and then get to hit for 5. And then Strider can sacrifice Eye Twitch to learn at any point. And generate an Inkling token as well. Alright, Storm's Wrath gonna clear the board, that's fine. I guess I could sack in response, but then we lose the Inkling, so... Better to let damage happen instead of scrying here. And then what do we get? Could get Environmental Sciences to hit our land drop. Yeah, that's probably fine. And then... What's my play here? I could go Sciences plus Shale. Could just play another Finale. To be mana efficient. Let's go Sciences plus Shale. Just want to make sure we can play Lurus and get something back out of the graveyard right away. So we're fine playing a long grindy game against a bunch of sweepers and removal with double finale in hand. Eye Twitch is good too. So start by playing finale, I think. See if there's a response. Kills my inkling, sure. And then we'll hit for one. Play Eye Twitch and put a counter on it. So I guess the situation we want to avoid is our opponent ramping into an Ugin all of a sudden with an Iron Crank feed. Alright, so now we can Lorus replay Eye Twitch. And even if they cast another Storm's Wrath, they would die to our two Inkling tokens. And our opponent packs it in. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand, facing Gigantha the Wellspring as companion. So we've got our savior to protect Lurus. Opponent runs out an Eye Twitch, so some sort of black-green past the deck. So we'll make sure to keep Swamp in hand in case of future Snarls, and then run out Clarion Spirit here. So, would love to draw a Myers Grasp to kill Apprentice before it starts dealing a ton of damage to us. Doom Foretold could be useful, although their opponent's gonna have plenty of creatures they don't mind sacrificing. Gets a Pass Summoning. Back up Lurus. 
Doesn't do a whole lot for me yet, so I might be better off playing Voice Strider. Either way, fine attacking with Clarion Spirits. Opponent takes it. It's going to be a Sanchmore Witch, which we kind of want to deal with as soon as possible. I Twitch means I can sacrifice it to my Strider to get an answer for the Witch. And Necrotic Fumes makes sense. And then do we want to Snarl on top? Not really. Exile the goat. And then I'm probably still fine to attack here. Put on double block strider, we'll make it indestructible. And then next turn we can play Lurus Replay, Selfless Savior. Our opponent gets a second pest summoning. And it's gonna be a Lovestruck Beast. Making a human and a hunt for specimens. Right, let's see if they get more pest summonings or maybe necrotic fumes. Nope, more pest summonings. So we are down to 13, this apprentice. Doing a lot of damage. Alright. Could also go Clarion Spirit, play Lurus, and attack with the team. They could double block Strider since we cannot get that one back with Lurus. But opponent takes it. So they might be setting up a big plum, the Forbidden, to drain us with Apprentice. Next turn I can play Eye Twitch with Lurus, sacrifice it and get another answer. But not before this is gonna deal a lot of damage to us. So your opponent's just passing with Plum up. Well, at least I can force the issue. And then the opponent's gonna lose a bunch of blockers. So I think we get Reduce. And then our opponent's gonna have to decide what to do next. There's a Plum of the Forbidden. It's going to draw five cards and drain us. And we'll attack with the team, including Loris since we have a backup. Alright, so our opponent's at 8. We've got a lot of tokens, so if we find our dramatic finale, that can help us close out the game as well. If this is a double pest summoning turn, we could aggressively go digging for a finale fountain. So they might have another plum. So we don't have to necessarily close out the game next turn. Because, yeah, sacrificing double Clarion Spirit does lose quite a bit of board presence. How about we sacrifice one Spirit token? 
since it would still have lethal. Eye Twitch. If I sacrifice Eye Twitch, I could Academic Probation as well to um, prevent the opponent from casting Bastion, which is one way we could lose. Although I can just replay it with Lurus. I don't know, let's bottom and then just take our draw step and then we'll see what happens. They might have another Plum in hand, which can also gain a bit of life, but it also loses life when they cast it. And there's Dramatic Finale. The name is fitting. So we found it after all. Pumps our spirits. Yeah, I guess we'll tank with everyone. And even though they can gain life with the pests if they sacrifice them, it also loses life if they plumb. If they just have a village rights, I guess they could survive, but then they don't have a board. Or maybe a heartless act killing one of our creatures. Yeah, plumb's not gonna do it here, since it also loses one life. So dramatic finale, true to its name, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing a Kahira, the Orphan Guard, so it could be a control deck. Our hand's not great if we're up against a control deck with double Myers Grasp, but uh, I guess we'll try it. Alright, Temple of Plenty, so it might be a cat tribal deck after all, in which case Myers Grasp should be just fine. Turn to play Shale. And then we've got the combo of Lurus plus Doom Foretold with Shale that can return out of the graveyard over and over. Opponent runs out Kahira. And we've got our own cat here. Could also play Ambrose for 4 mana. It's gonna be a Leonin war leader, 5-5. Five, five. So that's pretty big. And another Mars Grasp. So could double Mars Grasp the War Leader. Instead, what I prefer is Grasp Kahira and then replay Grasp to shrink the War Leader. That way we get our lures value, and the opponent shouldn't have any great attacks with the war leader. And we'll keep lures back just in case. And then next turn we can finish off War Leader, maybe play another Mars Grasp out of the graveyard. Right, opponent puts Kahira in hand, runs out a Garrison Cat. Dramatic Finale, also a good one. But I kind of want to just clear the opponent's board. And now we can start attacking with Lurus. And now that we dealt with the Garrison Cat, Doom Foretold's also going to be more impactful. I see Gus Chariot's a good one, makes two cat tokens. And a Rally the Ranks naming Cat. Alright. Well, maybe change of plans and we'll replay Mars Grasp once again to clear the cat tokens. They can crew the chariot in response. And then probably not their Mars Grasp here. Putting Grasp on Chariot is not a great idea since it's going to fall off once it stops becoming a creature. So we'll just hit for one. I 
They do have a lot of random permanents they can sacrifice to the Doom Foretold now. But if Lurus stays in play, then we can just replay stuff out of the graveyard. And yeah, our opponent explodes. The recursion from Lurus just being too strong here. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine opening hand. Savior into Shale into Lurus. Don't need black mana. And then we'll have Savior in play to protect our Lurus right away. Hit for one. And this hand could definitely benefit from some sort of engine like Doom Foretold or Dramatic Finale. Opponent on a red-white Magecraft deck. Alright. So we can hit for one. Play Lurus. And add some counters. So we can basically chum block the ground creatures forever with Lurus getting back creatures out of the graveyard. So they'll need an exile based removal spell for Lurus, but then we still have a backup. Yeah, opponent of the full three colors here Jeskai, Magecraft. So Wistrider is going to be useful. Yeah, we can attack with Lurus and Shale. And then play Garrison Cats. Sacrifice Savior, just so we can replay it and put a counter on it. Clarion Spirit gonna start making some tokens, double Clarion Spirit. Alright, that's a way to stall out the board a bit. Still no black man, unfortunately. So we can attack with probably everyone. And we'll replay Savior to have it on defense. Could take quite a beating with double line scribe in play, so can be too careful. We know Ty is unexpected. Although, if our opponent gets too aggressive, they could just die on the way back. So we'll see what they hit. Shepherd. So, Blade Historian is what we don't want to see. Hollow Blade, for now we're still fine. And a Hactos. All right, I think if we take everything and attack back, our opponent's dead. Taking eight plus six, 14, plus eight, 22. No blocks needed. All right, GG's. So our opponent with an interesting adventure, we know Tom Magecraft deck. See of one mind, good synergy in these types of decks as well. Another Hactos. And the last card. Another Winota. Alright, fair enough. Alright, so we get to see our drama then deck in action. And overall, Dramatic Finale seems to be doing quite a bit of work, especially against more controlling decks, but also against aggressive decks that have to get past or chum blocking creatures at some point to trigger the Dramatic Finale. And then of course, if we ever find one of our sacrifice engines, we can start generating those inklings by ourselves. So overall, pretty fun black-white sacrifice token deck that I recommend if you've got the cards for it, but maybe not gonna take over standard anytime soon. So that's gonna do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel. And you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.